What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite games from E3 2018. I gotta say, it's definitely been a very good E3 with tons of games that I'm looking forward to. It's probably been the most exciting E3 since 2015 when the Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced. And funny enough, the lack of Final Fantasy VII footage was probably the most disappointing part of E3 for me. But besides that, it's been a great E3, so let's go through the games announced. Just so we're clear, I'm not covering every game by every company, just the ones that interest me, and thankfully, there are a lot of them. So let's start off with Nintendo. I went into the Nintendo Direct wanting two things, a new Fire Emblem and more information on the new Smash Bros. And I got both of these things, and I gotta say, I'm definitely satisfied. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate looks very promising to me. As someone who's a big fan of Melee, I'm happy to see that Smash Ultimate appears to be a faster paced game. I think that the addition of dash dancing and the ability to attack straight out of dash will be a very good thing for the game. It gives more options for the players and that's almost always a good thing. There was also a moment where I was incredibly excited when they mentioned directional air dodging, which could have meant that wave dashing was back, but it was soon confirmed by top players that this wasn't the case. Now Armada claims that hit stun has also increased a little bit and that's definitely good news. This means more possibility of combos which would make the game more exciting to watch and play. I really hope the days of 2 hit combos from Smash 4 are over since they made it a lot slower and a lot less fun to watch. Armada also says that edge guarding may be back and again that's great news as well. The edge is one of the most fun aspects of melee and really helps speed up the pace of the game. And I'm also happy to see that all of the characters are back and it's absolutely crazy to see that Ridley will actually become a playable character after years and years of fans requesting it. It seems like the best aspects of Smash 4 were kept while also speeding up the pace of the game a little bit and I really think there's something for every single Smash fan to enjoy, regardless of which game you prefer. Now as for Fire Emblem, so far there isn't too much to go on. The story seems to be standard Fire Emblem affair and I don't really expect too too much in that regard. The gameplay on the other hand seems to have been tweaked a little bit. The big change is the fact that each unit has a band of generic units that appear when you enter combat. It seems like you can influence these units a little bit with the formation option. But other than that it's not very clear what these units do. I'm looking forward to more information about this game and we do have a release window of spring 2019 to look forward to. Now also from Nintendo we saw a game called Daemon Cross Machina which is an action packed mech shooter. Definitely a game that came out of left field but it looks like a ton of fun. The game's definitely on my radar right now and I do expect to pick it up and give it a go. And finally, there's Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, which was announced a couple of days before E3. And I gotta say, I am not very impressed with these games at all. From what I've seen from these games, it seems to be a generic Pokemon RPG that's not a new generation and has a few mechanics to introduce new people to the series. I think it's great for people who want to get into the series, but I was hoping for something more along the lines of Coliseum or XD. The Pokemon catching mechanic is not something that I'm really a fan of either, I'd rather just do it the old fashioned way. This one's looking like a pass for me, but I will pay attention to what fans have to say about this one, and I'll also likely be picking up the generation 8 game that's coming out next year. Now moving on to Bethesda. After a disastrous showing last year where they announced Skyrim ports and paid mods for Fallout, Bethesda came back this year with a strong showing. There was one disappointment for me this year and that was Fallout 76, which is an online survivor game. It's a very strange direction to take the series and the fact that the game seems to be primarily online is a big turn off for me. They have stressed that it can be played solo, but I'm not entirely convinced that it'll be worth it to play single player. This game is a hard pass for me at the moment. But other than that, Bethesda pretty much showed something for everyone. Rage 2 and Doom Eternal are on my radar. I played a little bit of the original Rage and it was a lot of fun. And the second game looks to be a promising post-apocalyptic shooter. I've also been meaning to play Doom 2016 for a while and the announcement of Doom Eternal is definitely going to push it ahead on my backlog. 
There was also Elder Scrolls Blades, a mobile first-person RPG, and while I'm typically not a huge mobile gamer, I will be giving this one a shot. It seems to be Elder Scrolls Lite with a town building and a dungeon crawler mechanic, and I can totally get behind that. And finally, we got two major teasers. The first one being a sci-fi RPG called Starfield. We don't know too much about it, but the fact that it's an RPG being made by Bethesda is enough to get me excited. The same goes for Elder Scrolls 6, which we know very little about, but I am incredibly stoked regardless. While Skyrim has been ported and remade to death, it's still a great game that I absolutely love and it's definitely nice to hear confirmation that a new game is in the works. Now the next company I want to talk about is Square Enix and my god their showing was awful. I genuinely don't know why they even bothered to hold a conference given that they really didn't show anything new other than Babylon's Fall. And we don't know too too much about that game either other than the fact that it's being made by Platinum Games which is very exciting. I am a bit of a history nerd and this game will motivate me to look into Babylon which I'm not super familiar with at the moment. Other than that, the conference is really just games that we already knew about, and we didn't even get much more information on them. Nonetheless, Squeenix does have a few games that I am extremely excited about. Octopath Traveler still looks like a fantastic game, and I will be picking it up day one. I made a full video on this game, so if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, I will leave a link to it in the description. There's also Dragon Quest XI, which is one of my most anticipated games of the year. By all accounts from the Japanese fans, the game is a fantastic classic JRPG and I'm happy to see that there is English voice acting. There are times where I just want to sit down and play a traditional JRPG with no strings attached and Dragon Quest XI appears to be just that. And lastly there's Kingdom Hearts 3. Now I am not a Kingdom Hearts fan by any means, so I won't be doing an in-depth analysis, but I generally like Kingdom Hearts gameplay and smooth action RPGs, and Kingdom Hearts 3 looks to have the most refined gameplay in the series. I am also really excited for the Toy Story and the Pirates of the Caribbean world, so I will be picking this game up despite having limited knowledge of the series, but I'll be primarily playing it for the gameplay. From my understanding, the series has a very convoluted story and I doubt that I'll really know what the hell is going on. Either way, I'm very happy for the fans of this series. I know that you guys have been waiting a very, very long time for this, and I'm glad that you guys are finally going to be able to enjoy this game soon enough. I have literally grown up during this game's development cycle, and it's nice to finally have a release date. Let's move on to Bandai Namco, a company that had a very impressive showing. The big news for me is the Tales of Vesperia announcement, which is fantastic news for the Tales community. For those of you who don't know, the only version of Vesperia that was localized was the 360 version and as a result, a lot of fans missed out on this game. So I'm really happy for the fans that have never experienced this game and I'm also excited to give it a go myself. I've only played the 360 version of the game myself, so I'm pumped to give the PS3 exclusive content a go. Vesperia is my favorite game in the series and I would highly recommend that you guys pick this game up. It's got one of the best Tales protagonists in Yuri Lowell, a solid story, and the trademark Tales series gameplay. I also hope that there will be additional content on top of the content from the PS3 version, but we'll see about that. One of the surprises from Bamco was Jump Force, an action brawler with Shonen Jump characters. This game looks right down my alley. I absolutely love shonen anime and I'm super excited to play a game with characters like Luffy, Goku, Kira, and Naruto. I'm really looking forward to seeing the characters that they announce in the future. In particular, I would go crazy if some Hunter x Hunter characters were announced. It's my favorite shonen and it'd be a dream come true to be able to play as Gon or Killua in a current generation game. On a side note, I really do hope that Togashi's health improves and that he will be able to finish the manga, but obviously his personal well-being comes first. On the topic of games based on shonen anime, we got some new footage for My Hero Academia Justice for All. I'm generally skeptical of these sorts of games since they tend to be cheap cash grabs, but it seems like Bamco is putting effort into polishing it up. And honestly, I love cell shading and I love My Hero Academia, and that's enough to get me excited. As for Sony, there was one game in particular that I wanted to see and I got it. 
I am beyond excited for The Last of Us 2 and it's shaping up to be an instant hit. The gameplay has improved significantly from the original, the trailer shows a much more intelligent AI, and some new mechanics like jumping and sneaking under cars. I am looking forward to learning more about the story and the characters as well, especially Dina. I also want to see what's been going on with Joel in the aftermath of the brilliant ending of the original game. I assume that this is going to be Joel and Ellie's adventure once again, and I'm totally fine with that given that they are fantastic characters. The only downside of this presentation was that there was no release date, but hopefully we can get this by the end of 2019. But other than The Last of Us, there wasn't too much that impressed me from Sony. The only other game that I am looking forward to is Ghost of Tsushima, which is an open world action game set in feudal Japan during the Mongol invasions. It's being made by Sucker Punch, which is a company that I'm a big fan of and that I trust will deliver on the gameplay front. And when it comes to plot, I would like for it to be as historically accurate as possible while also making sure that they tell a coherent and entertaining story. I really hope that they touch on the theme of what it means to be a samurai and the Bushido Code, which is a set of principles that states that a samurai must be honorable, compassionate, loyal, courageous, etc. From my limited understanding, the Bushido Code is an extremely important aspect of Japanese history and even has some indirect influences on Japanese culture today, so I am excited to see how they incorporate this into the game. And just one last note on Sony, we saw Death Stranding once again, and as always, it was weird and I still don't know what it is. Another company that has a lot of good stuff coming out in the near future is Sega. And one game that I am beyond excited for is Valkyria Chronicles 4. The original game was such a beautiful artistic masterpiece with fantastic gameplay and it's nice to have that back on a home console. It's already out in Japan and by most accounts it's a great game. The story is set during the same time frame as the original but it focuses on a federation operation to take the imperial capital. The gameplay maintains the technical goodness of the original while also polishing it up and making some improvements. There's also the new Grenadier class which seems useful and will add a lot more strategy to the game. Sega also put up some footage for Shining Resonance Refrain which is loosely on my radar. The best way that I can describe it from what I've seen is that it's an action RPG that blends elements of Tales and Final Fantasy XII. I'll have to wait and see with this game. I doubt that the story will be anything special, but it does seem like it may be a fun game gameplay wise. On the Atlas front, we got some new footage for Catherine Fullbody. The new girl on the block, Rin, makes her appearance by sitting on Vincent's face, which is exactly what I would expect from Catherine. This game is another day one purchase for me. I love the original and I'm looking forward to the new scenarios. And I'm also excited for the new difficulty options because honestly, the original was too hard for me. For those of you who haven't played Catherine, expect a wacky, unique, and mature story that will have you hooked and puzzle gameplay that's surprisingly deep. I definitely recommend you guys check this game out. Two more day one purchases for me are Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight and Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight. These games are going to be fun Persona fan service and that's exactly what I want. In particular, I'm excited to see all of my favorite Persona 3 characters redesigned in beautiful HD. All the characters look fantastic, especially Aegis and Yukari, and I cannot wait to get my hands on these games. Now just to wrap things up, there's a few companies that had one game that I'm interested in. Just like everyone else, I have my eyes on CD Projekt's Cyberpunk 2077, which can very well become the greatest western RPG ever when it comes out. I really like the futuristic America setting of this game, and what really fascinates me is that the city is somewhat dystopian, but it doesn't seem to be a total lost cause. The city appears to benefit from technological advancements and the main character V does seem to dream big. And this leads me to believe that there will be many many problems in Night City but there is also hope for the future. 
The talk of dreaming big also makes me think of the American dream, and I do suspect that that will be a big part of the game's themes. In terms of gameplay, we haven't seen anything yet, but from what I've read, there's going to be several different classes, an open world, many different ways to interact with NPCs, melee weapons, ranged weapons, and all of the RPG goodness that we love. And with CD Projekt Red at the helm, this game promises to be something special. Digital Devolver also had a very entertaining conference that genuinely made me laugh quite a few times, and they put out Metal Wolf Chaos, which is a remake of a Japan-only game by FromSoft. You play as an American president in a powered suit fighting off a coup that was started by the vice president. Seems to be a game that's totally out there and over the top, and I will be keeping an eye on this one. And finally, I am looking forward to Starlink by Ubisoft. I generally don't trust Ubisoft and they have a pretty poor track record if you ask me, but Starlink looks like a very fun space shooter and we really don't get many games like this. And of course, the addition of Fox is exciting and makes me seriously consider picking up the Switch version of this game. And with that, we've gone over the games that I am looking forward to and there's an overwhelming amount. I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to find the time to play all of these games, but there's no doubt that it's a great time to be a gamer. There's also plenty of games like Red Dead Redemption, Battlefield, Tomb Raider, and Spider-Man that are fantastic in their own right, but not necessarily my cup of tea. This E3 had so many great games that pretty much everyone has something to look forward to. So let me know what you guys are excited about down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.